Asian scuba diving instructor once told me I couldn't have any lunch because I was too fat for my wetsuit. <laughs> yeah, that made me pretty depressed. But what if fat really could make you depressed? To understand how takes us on a journey across our entire approach to science. You see, scientists are a lot like scuba divers. They plunge deeper and deeper into their specific area of research, finding some interesting things, but not necessarily thinking about how they connect with everything else in the sea of human knowledge. So we end up with immunologists over here studying how the immune system uses chemical messages called cytokines to communicate between cells. And at the same time over here, psychologists had noticed that when we're physically ill, we also change the way we think, feel, and behave. So how does the brain know we've got an infection? And then somewhere else entirely, doctors are wondering why cancer treatments are making some of their patients depressed. Could drugs based on cytokines be changing the way we feel? It turns out that cytokines are doing what a lot of scientists aren't. They're communicating across boundaries. These, these chemical messages intended for other immune cells are actually being picked up and read by the brain. It's kind of like Facebook and the US government. <laughs> <laughs> cytokines always affect your memory as well. <laughs> Okay, um, so cytokines, um, they, oh, crap. <laughs> Hi everyone at home. Um, <laughs> so by cytokines, it turns out, that by working together, scientists realize that cytokines can use the signals to communicate to the brain and even travel into the brain itself tell us that we've got an infection and make us feel lethargic and need of warmth and comfort food. Now, if you're ill, that's helpful because it encourages you to rest and recover. But if, if, you're, if it's just a side, chronic side effect of cancer treatments, then it's much less helpful. But this was a story about fat because fat isn't just an inert tissue. It's an active tissue that's producing cytokines. And these cytokines make you tired, unmotivated, and in need of chocolate. So it leads to this vicious cycle where fat makes you depressed, and at the same time, depression encourages you to engage in behaviors that go on and make you fat. Go on and make you fat. So this isn't an excuse. <laughs> the thing is, you do it again and again and again at home, and it's perfect. And what happened to you there is exactly what happened to me in my first fame lab. I was talking, I was talking, and then it all disappeared. And so, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Remember that. And it was a beautiful presentation. But you were talking about one thing. You were talking about scientists over here, scientists over there. What do you think of the benefit of scientists all working together? Well, the fact is that when we're studying the human body, it works together. So cytokines have always been thought of as part of the immune system, but we know they communicate with the brain, we know that they're produced by fat and so on, and so whilst the body is working in that interactive way, then we have to work in that interactive way, whereas we're never actually going to understand what's going on. Can I just start with, with, with your name? Why do you just not call it, the, 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 it fat? Then you could have Vicky Burns Fat. Nice. You just, it would have been lovely. No, but, I, I, it's great. No, what's wrong with that? I mean, it's interesting when you're talking about interdisciplinary science, and it's, I'm going to pick up on where Maggie sort of pinched my question. Uh, you're reading again. Now, it's really important. Do you think the boundaries of science are within disciplines or at the boundaries of those disciplines? I think we push on most where we take people who've got specific specialisms and then bring them together to see how they interact to solve the bigger issues. Because most of our bigger issues in society, whether they're biological, ob obesity, depression, as I talked about today, or 
the, um, climate change and so on, they're interdisciplinary problems. And so what I would have said, had I not forgotten all my words, was that we have to bear these in mind when we're thinking about public health interventions, because a lot of public health interventions assume that if you just tell people that something's good for them, then they'll do it more. But actually, there's all these biological drivers that make that really unlikely, that they will always adhere to these healthy behaviours. And so we need to design these interventions so that they actually deal with reality and improve population health. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, tough call. It's really difficult. And I've also done exactly that thing. I dried up. I, I was seven years old at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, well, that's going to make you feel better. Now. <laughs> I, re I remember it with shame to this day. So Were you wearing a wetsuit at the same time? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> but I was going to ask, actually... Because you see, classically, you see people who are obese who also have heart disease, they develop uh, dementias, they have um, diabetes. Is this all the inflammatory process that's initiated by cytokines from fat? Not necessarily associated with the cytokines from fat, but yes, all of those things are linked by inflammation. It's one of the really exciting things that's going on at the moment. So um, all the conditions that you mention, um, they're associated with higher levels of, fat, of um, inflammation, and they're related together. So if you have any one of them, you're likely to have quite a few of them. And what that does is it opens up a whole load of new treatment options. So for example, we know that exercise can reduce your baseline levels of inflammation, and that's one of the reasons why it's beneficial, not just in terms of helping you lose weight, but also in terms of reducing that inflammation, reducing your risk of diabetes and obesity and so on. And it also opens up the possibility of having anti-inflammatory solutions to de depression, for example. If we know that these things are related, people are now investigating whether you can use antidepressants at the same time as anti-inflammatories to have greater effects on depression than just using the antidepressants. Great answer. Not too late to ululate for Vicky Burns.